Captain Henry Marks from Landfall Navigation, and today we're going to talk about why you need a life raft, and specifically the Switlick Offshore Passage Raft. Why do you need a life raft? Simple answer is you're going in harm's way. Your tender or your, te uh, your uh, rowboat is not an acceptable life raft. There are numerous documented instances where people have died trying to use an inflatable boat as a life raft. They just are not meant for the same purpose. Should I buy or rent a life raft? Well, life rafts today are not that horrendously expensive thing that we all heard about. They're re relatively affordable, and unless you're going to make a one-time trip, you should buy your own raft, see that it's serviced at the appropriate times, and know your raft and know what's in it. The one problem you have with a rental raft is that if uh, you do rent a raft where you are leaving with a boat, you now have to get it back to the rental agency, and this is something you can't take down to UPS and ship. It's hazardous material and it has to be shipped very, very expensively. Now, choosing a life raft. What do, you, what do you need in a life raft? Well, the first thing you need to do is consider your route. Is it inshore, is it near shore, or is it offshore? Obviously, the gear you're gonna to need to go across the Pacific Ocean is gonna be significantly different than the gear you're gonna need sailing locally within five or 10 miles of your harbor. In both cases, I might add, the boat can sink and you may need an alternative place to go. Where are you going to store the raft? Um, there are two ways life rafts come. They come in valises, which is like the one we have here from Switlick, or they come in canisters, which are those white plastic boxes you see on a lot of boats. The valise is lighter and easier to stow, but the negative on the valise is that um, it has to be accessible. U.S. Sailing prescribes that if you use a valise life raft, you need to be able to get it from where it's stored to the rail in 15 seconds. I prefer a canister mounted in a uh, aluminum or stainless steel cradle on deck somewhere after the mast on a sailboat or in the after part of a powerboat where you'll be able to get to it and get it over the side easily. Hi, my name is Brian Kender. I am a sales manager at Switlick where we have been making professional grade life rafts for over 50 years. And today I want to talk to you about a couple of versions of our life rafts that we have. Our first version of life raft that we have is our CPR, the Coastal Passage Raft. The second is the OPR, the Offshore Passenger Raft, which we have here today that we're going to be inflating. And the last of which is the Search and Rescue SAR-6, which is our Transoceanic Raft. The uh, first raft I want to talk to you about today is the CPR, which is the Coastal Passage Raft. This raft is designed for people that are going anywhere between zero to 100 miles offshore. Um, it has a first of its kind for a uh, five year service interval. It has an air charge, which means it inflates in about five to 10 seconds. And it also has a pressure gauge on the valve. So before you go out, you can check and make sure that your raft is charged and ready to go. The second raft that I want to talk to you about today is our OPR or our offshore passenger raft. This raft is very similar to the CPR, but is a dual tube uh, raft that we have. This raft is recommended if you're going anywhere from 80 plus miles out. Uh, similar to the CPR, it has a five year service interval. It has an air charge with a pressure gauge on it, as well as a convertible canopy. And the last raft that we are going, going to be talking to you about today is our SAR-6 Search and Rescue 6. This is one of the best life rafts that you can buy. It's used by professionals all over the world. And if you're gonna be crossing an ocean, this is a raft that you're gonna wanna buy.